Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee before I get ready to do some squatting and everything here in a bit, because uh, as you guys know, I squat every day. So let's talk about hex bar deadlifts and why I bought a hex bar. And this is actually the second hex bar I will have owned since I've been on YouTube. If you guys recall, I had one back in my other gym. Uh, you guys just saw me train on a hex bar in the UK on camera. Remember, I was doing 600 pound hex bar pulls. And then uh, I've trained at one here in Houston on camera before. So it's not like I'm anti-hex bar. And I think where that confusion comes in is, number one, people see me as a barbell purist. Number two, uh, I have ragged on people for doing high handle trap bar pulls and pretending like that. That counts as a deadlift as far as the weight they lift. And I think there's a big, big difference there. Uh, I am not a fan of the high handle trap bar. I'm a fan of the trap bar. Uh, as a general strength training tool. And in fact, I've gone so far as to say that off-season power lifters can totally benefit from the hex bar. Uh, and I've pointed out a lot of field athletes. I don't have a problem with, say, football players or rugby players using the hex bar as a primary exercise, right? Even in place of a barbell. I think it's perfectly acceptable. Uh, but I think for most people's needs, the majority of people out there, they could build a base just fine with a normal deadlift bar. They're not going to reach the sort of tonnages or do a training system to where they're necessarily going to get a lot out of a hex bar who are just training for, for whatever reason, a novice lifter or whatever. So yeah, I tend to tell novice lifters, just pull the a barbell, learn the conventional deadlift. Uh, and as far as the high handles go, no, I don't think people need to be pulling with the high handles. They don't, they build less muscle, even though it lets you lift more weight because you're just doing a shorter range of motion. And I think people get the idea, uh, of what I'm talking about when you see perfect examples so that, that someone doesn't feel like I'm ragging on a specific YouTuber. There's a specific YouTuber who I have called out for this, who did a 700 pound with strap, high handle trap bar deadlift who can't pull 585 even sumo when they had to, right? This person essentially has a trap bar high handle deadlift at least 150 pounds heavier than they can actually deadlift. And that's normal with the high handle trap bar. It gives you that much of an advantage, gives you that much of an advantage. And it's because it is an easier pull biomechanically due to the actual hand position, it being a trap bar itself, and then the high handles trim out a lot of range of motion. So yeah, you can lift more weight, but it doesn't mean that you're building more muscle. Because in that case, you're, you're lifting more weight without the muscles having to work any harder to lift the heavier weight, and that's the difference. Um, now, as far as the trap bars go, why am I a fan of them? Uh, they're an alternative to the deadlift that in some people's programming put a little less stress on the lower back. In other words, uh, depending upon what your training program looks like, your lower back can only handle so much fatigue in a given work week before it starts to become a limiting factor. A perfect example, what am I doing right now? I'm doing a Bulgarian style training where I squat every day. That is really limiting with my workload, my ability to get in and deadlift. It really is limiting me tremendously uh, because I'm squatting to a training max every day and I'm trying to build that up over time to get to where I squat at least 500 every single day. That limits the ability to deadlift. This is now a perfect example. What I'm doing is an example of someone who could benefit from rotating the trap bar in for a while so that I could start trap bar deadlifting multiple times a week uh, because again, it makes your deadlift slightly more squatty. And when I mean slightly more into a squat, it doesn't mean it's an even hybrid between a squat and a deadlift. That's where people make the mistake. And I think Greg Knuckles, I'm gonna give props here, uh, his Stronger by Science, and he's a fan of the trap bar also. Uh, and again, I want people to remember, this isn't me flip-flopping, this isn't anything new. You guys have seen me throughout time distinctly use a trap bar through three different phases, right? I was using a trap bar as far back as over four years ago on camera. So uh, again, I, would, I was using one again last year. So let's go back to the point of I've never been anti-trap bar. Never been anti-trap bar. I've always seen it as a valuable general strength training tool. But again, the advantage is it removes a little bit of lower back, adds more quad. Now, as far as the weight difference, there's research on that. People say, well, how much more can you lift? What's it compared to a deadlift? About 8%. You can usually pull about 8% more on a trap bar, a low handle trap bar that is at the same height on the floor that a conventional deadlift is, right? Those lower handles, not raised handles that come up above the, 
the line where the, the collars and everything are, the low handle. It's about 8% more than you can conventional deadlift on average. So in other words, if you can pull 500 on a trap bar, you're probably approximately a 460 pound deadlifter. And it does transfer. That's the argument people make. They're like, well, there's a hair less hip hinge and a, and a hair more squat in there. It's something like if you were to compare them, a, uh, a low bar squat's right here and a conventional deadlift's right here on the hip hinge versus squat. And again, Greg Knuckles has an amazing chart on this. The trap bar deadlift's right about here. You know, it's about a quarter of the way over. So it's not e even close to being like halfway between the two. So because of that, it gives good transfer to the deadlift. Uh, now, obviously if a person wants a maximum deadlift for sport specificity, when they start easing into say a powerlifting meet, a strength lifting meet, whatever it is where they need to deadlift or hit a max deadlift, it would be a good idea to be doing more deadlifting of either conventional or sumo, depending on what they're gonna wanna do. But the deadlift is one of those exercises that everything makes you better at deadlifting. Any pull from the floor improves your deadlift uh, because there's not much technique to a deadlift. And that's what people need to remember. There's not a lot of motor unit learning. It's one of the simplest exercises ever. And if you screw up a deadlift, it's, it's bad. I mean, people do it every day. But in terms of learning to do, per, performing a textbook perfect deadlift is one of the easiest exercises to learn. It's easier to learn than the bench press. It's easier to learn than the squat. It's easier to learn than the overhead press. It is actually a technically easier exercise, a conventional deadlift is. Uh, it's not a lot of motor pattern involvement, it's just raw strength. It's just a matter of learning to pull the slack out, get some certain mental cues right, and pulling. That's, that's all there is to it. So what the deadlift does is that it just finds the weakest muscles in your back, your posterior chain, legs, everything else, whatever your weakest muscle is, uh, that's probably what's gonna limit you the most on a deadlift. And it doesn't mean that other muscles getting stronger won't still improve it. In other words, even if your hamstrings aren't the weak link, if your hamstrings get bigger and stronger, it'll improve your deadlift. Your hips get bigger and stronger, it'll improve your deadlift. Uh, if your lats get bigger and stronger, it will improve your deadlift. So essentially, all squats and all pulls from the floor, and in fact, most even uh, back work in general, will improve your deadlift. The hex bar is close enough that it gives really, really good transference. It gives good transference. Uh, it lets you lift a hair more weight. Now, on the recovery end, could that matter for axial loading? Yes, but most of us, even me, aren't doing enough axial loading to bury ourselves. It's not a problem, even on Bulgarian style training. Uh, in my case, that lower, that's less stress on the lower back is a benefit. Now, the argument being, yeah, but that less stress on the lower back also means less lower back strength and development, so less carryover to your deadlift, and that's true. However, I think when we get to a situation to where we need the trap bar deadlift, in order to not burn out our lower back, our lower back is maximally fatigued through the week. So I think in the case of something like Bulgarian training, that is a perfect example. It's a perfect example of where your lower back is probably being maximally fatigued through the week, even if you use a deadlift variant specialty bar like the hex bar, or the trap bar, whatever you want to call it, to get a deadlift in, a heavy deadlift in, uh, while keeping your lower back at just a barely recovered enough level that you can continue to squat and deadlift. And I think they, it's good for striking a balance there. And it's a good general strength tool. So when we go over and we talk about general strength, I think that's where the hex bar deadlift fits in. For people who are just trying to get all around strong, who at their given point in time do not need a max deadlift, do not need a max deadlift, but who have a very high training workload through the week, I think that's where the trap bar tends to shine. So all season power lifters, football players, rugby players, wrestlers, people in contact sports, I think the trap bar is fantastic. Uh, people who are training for physique purposes, yeah, I think the trap bar works good there also. Um, the upside of it is there's no special grip to worry about. In other words, it falls into part of your grip training. That's the other big point. There's You don't carry that risk of bicep tear. So if a person like me, again, I'm trying to work on my hook grip, I am probably not going to conventional deadlift again until I have my hook grip down. Because I'm at a point in my life, I don't want to risk another bicep tear. And it's I've 
adapted my mindset. I've evolved as a lifter to a point to where I realize the hook grip is probably the way for me to go. So in the meantime, so that I can keep my deadlift strength up and get another big exercise in, again, the hex bar is valuable there because again, it's a, it's a valuable grip training tool that doesn't require you to use a mixed grip and doesn't require you to use a hook grip. Therefore, you can go ahead and deadlift with no risk of a bicep tear and without having to wear your thumbs out further doing your pulling off the floor if you're going to do a hook grip. And then again, we don't have to worry about straps either because this falls back into our grip training. So it strikes a good middle ground when people are trying to figure out which of those three things they want to do as far as their grip goes on the deadlift, the, the trap bar eliminates that. So again, we fall back into there's a certain niche to where this exercise works. And I think that falls into that area for just general strength for people who are through their novice phase, uh, who maybe need the exercise variation where they need some sort of break for a specific reason on their deadlift in terms of a grip concern, such as anything from the hook grip to the mixed grip uh, to lower back fatigue. This is where it works. It's a fantastic general strength exercise because that's the whole point. What have I told you guys my goals are? I want to get all around strong. I want to get strong at everything. I'm not talking about just being strong at the squat, bench, and deadlift. I want to be all around strong. Every basic movement pattern. Uh, general strength along with having some sport specific strength. And I think the trap bar fits nicely into that. And it's something I'm gonna be using for a while. So I'll have my next week, I'll probably start pulling with it on camera next week and we'll have it into the training footage. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.